Okay. You're going to get the definite impression that things were filmed out of order here. And that's because, well, they were filmed out of order. That's kind of how that works. But just stick with me. There's a plan. We had to catch up with Joseph's week with Ginny in California. And then we had to catch up on all the stuff that accidentally didn't get into last week's podcast that I thought was there and wasn't. And then try to get in a little bit of new stuff, too. Yeah. It is, it but it'll work. By the way, hi, this is Edward, and welcome to More Geek Than Gay. Music. There's no need to fear. Underdog is here. So that's why he's all dressed up. Yes. And ow, I hurt my finger. I don't know how I hurt my finger. My finger hurts. Probably when you lock the keys in the car at work today. Shh. Joseph's not supposed to know about that. <laughs> um, uh, so. <laughs> so. Um, we're back. I'm, I, or at least I'm back. Yeah, I was here. And. I apologize for not really pushing last week's episode that much. I found out that there was a horribly tragic error in how it recorded. And we had discussed it and decided that instead of fixing the last week, the one from last week, and then reposting it, I would just include everything into this week's. So that's a con. If you did catch last week's, thank you. And, and and howdy to all you in, in Australia. Yay! We have a we have a strong Australian fan base. Oh, do we? Yeah. Also, we have two people? <laughs> Pretty much, I think, yeah. Yeah. When, and we have a, a Ni Hao, Ni Hao Ma. We have a Chinese fan base. Yeah, we have three. Uh, well, actually, I think we only have one. I thought we had three. Yeah, yeah. We, we have a bigger Australian fan base than the Chinese. Oh. Uh-huh. Do we but, still have Brazil? I don't think so. Oh, he left. Yeah. Yeah, so... Uh, probably because you spoke Portuguese. He was, <laughs> probably he was like, he's like, you either said something bad, or he's like, oh my gosh, that's so horrible, and just so- decided to stop. I know, <laughs> my Portuguese was probably that bad. But, yeah, th- those are our three strongest, uh, is here, the United States, in Australia, and China. No. Those are Those are our target markets at this moment, apparently. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, um... Hi. Uh, my week has been basically work. Time out. What? Who are you? Oh, well, I'm Edward. Okay. And you're Joseph. Yes. All right. Yes. Now, your week, work. My week was basically work. That's pretty much it. I don't think I'm missing anything. We had a cookie exchange on Friday. Yeah. Um, I made cookies. What'd you do? Um... They were mainly chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> And then, uh, and then I took them in and we exchanged cookies. Okay. There's nothing really exciting to say about a cookie exchange. What did you do? And so that was Friday, is with the cookie exchange. Yeah. Okay. And Saturday? What did you do? Saturday, I... Did I do anything of interest? No. 
No, we went to a party. Went to a Christmas party. Yeah. Yeah, got got a Pez dispenser out of it. Yeah, and I got oh, I got pink gloves, Jeannie. And then uh, so that's pretty much my my Saturday, isn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah. Yeah. And then Sunday, um, hung out at a graveyard. Yes, cemetery. Yeah. And then, um... Graveyards to me are like old. This, you know, there's no old graveyards here in Arizona, so I just call them cemeteries. There's, there's like one or two. Not old, but there's, there's like yeah, one well, or like, two. There's actually even ones like Central Phoenix City. Yes, I know. The Pioneer. Which have like actual Real stones headphones. and stuff, yeah. Yeah. There's one off of Van Buren or something like that. Near Jefferson. the freeway. No, it's like right, you drive past it when you go by or when you're on the freeway. I don't know that one. It's really weird. It's all it's all surrounded by trees, so you don't even notice it. There's like on Twenty Seventh Avenue, but that's that's kind of newish. That was in the fifties or sixties. Well, it has a new it has a new one attached to it. Mm. So that might be the one I'm talking about because Possibly. there's one that it's an old one, and then there's a big new area right next to it. Yeah. But the old area is kind of overgrown with trees. Oh, okay. Because, you know, all the people who visited and kept it neat, nice and neat are dead. They're all buried in the new one now. So, um... And then, to, and then today? Uh, today is Monday. I went to work. And you locked yourself at the keys in the car? Shh! We're not telling Joseph about that. Did you tell Archie not to tell me? No. Because he did. Because he knew already. We don't tell Joseph about this. Shh! No, I'm just asking, did you tell him? Because, you know, of course he didn't listen to you. No, I didn't say anything to Archie about it. Because no. he would know. Well, Archie knew. Because you text him saying, can you go and pick up Joseph and get the keys and... No, I actually called him. Oh, either oh, way. Oh, I would have called him if I had done that, but shh. He already told me everything. Oh. So, that's that's my week. Okay. Nothing, nothing thrilling. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, okay, then my week, let's see, I got back. Oh! What? I found little Starro. Oh, I didn't know he was missing. And I found your poof. Yes, we found Emma. Yeah, I didn't know Starro was missing. Starro was missing. Our mascot was missing. Um, let's see, got back late Wednesday night. Uh, I had three <coughs> things to do Thursday, only did one of the three. Um, which was the last of... Um, Jeannie Koch's mini book tour over at the Poison Pen in Scottsdale. And I was a bad PA there. Because, really? Do you have to be a mime? I don't have to be. No um, one has to be a mime. But Jeannie Except like, for in France. Yeah, exactly. Jeannie likes, you know, wanted me to take pictures of you know, people taking, you know, getting the stuff, right? I knew I should have recorded this on my own, uh, and then make you just splice it in. Um, I, I can splice in lines. <laughs> I have the equipment. Oh, well, he found the text box. Tech box. I did, but it, I've kind of figured out how to make do really nicely without the stuff by now. Yeah. Yeah. So. Except for you know, how we're going to get Karen in. Yeah. Well, we'll figure that out. So, so instead of taking pictures, I ended up talking to her hub, husband and um, Lee. A local publisher. Publisher? No. No, 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 not the publisher. The, right. he, the head of programming for Phoenix Comic Con. I was thinking of Edwin's publisher. No, 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 no. Yeah, that was somewhere else. So, had a nice conversation. We Guess what we talked about? Sports. Yep, we talked about sports. Sports? Yes. And, let's see, what else? Friday, what did I do on Friday? Oh, I went to the, the magazine's office. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, found out that either tomorrow or Wednesday, and it, but it looks like it's going to be Wednesday, I have a screen test to do. Because they're going to do... That's not a screen test. That's a movie, you idiot. This is... Uh, now you're just as bad as Brian. He's already calling me Norma Desmond. I was thinking that you're ready for your close-up. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You're so gay. No, you're just that much of a Norma Desmond. There really is no other movie star that really encompasses all that you are. 
it's not the pictures that got small. I mean, it's not the it. It's things got small and it wasn't you. That's how that line goes. That's not how the line goes. Yeah, it's close enough. Not even close. You were closer when you were messing out, messing it up at the beginning. So, anyways, I have a screen test to do with the, with the magazine about a reality show about the magazine. Only four people are going to be in it. So, and there's eleven people who work there. So we'll see if I get it. If not, well. But only one of them's a drag queen. True. Okay, so. What happened here is that with all the excursions and back and forth and everything of yesterday, while we were recording our bit together, the battery died. Yeah. It died kind of off and on, and so I savage, sal savaged? Rawr, savaged. No, I salvaged what I was able to, and, um, Joseph's going to re-record his section about what he and Jeannie did during their trip. Other than that, you basically missed us talking about the cats need to be fixed because the poor boy who normally takes care of our little kitten girl, he's now become a boy and he's, he's very confused about what to do with her. Which is sad because he still wants to take care of her and be her mother. It's weird. Um... You also missed us talking about how, well, actually, basically, only the only additional thing you missed us talking about is how I found the box with all of our, well, most of the books of our, our buddies and everything. Um, there's still a couple books out there missing. I thought we had more of your books, Jordan. Why do we not have more of your books? And the answer from Jordan will be, because you didn't buy them. Hey, don't get smart with me. No back-talking sassy Jordan. So, we need to get more Jordan Summers books. That's really the long and the short of that. And other than that, that's what you missed. Okay? Uh, we're Joseph's going to record his section, and then I'm going to put it all together, and... That's how this works. We're going to have a seamless thing here, other than me announcing the seams. Bing! So, take two, apparently. Um, I just did a whole spiel. Oh, once again, my name is Joseph. I'm here recording by myself. Edward is at work. The reason why I'm recording by myself is because I recorded my trip with... Um, Jeannie on, on her mini book tour last night with Edward and I didn't like how it came out because it there is an hour's worth of stuff that I just rambled on and on and on and on and on and I was annoyed so I asked Edward if I could re-record it without him um, because that's the, how the schedule works and he agreed to it so let me start off by saying that um, this is once again my name is Joseph and I uh, this is my little um, mini book tour that I did with Jeannie Koch last week. We left on Friday the 6th and drove from Phoenix to San Diego. It's a six hour drive, which wasn't a bad drive because, you know, you know, when I'm talking to Jeannie, I have enjoyed my conversations with her, so time goes by quickly. Um, I like having good conversations with people. Um, those of you who really know me know that I could spend hours talking to people or listening to people and learning about their lives and their history and and things that they've gone through and you know I just like it um, so we stayed and when we got to San Diego we stayed at Oliver and Blanca's house um, thank you Ollie and all and Blanca about letting us stay there the place was go they had a very nice place um, they have two boys one um, Brian who's going to be one years old in January and then one and then there's um, Fred who's going to be five in January and so I had great time playing with the kids. Um, Jeannie has known Oliver since he was 19, I believe. He used to be a waiter here in, in Phoenix area and one at one of their favorite restaurants. So they just became friends over the years. Um, Oliver now works in, is now in the military. Um, so he, that's one of the reasons why he lives in San Diego. Also the fact that um, he, while he was in Japan, that's where he met Blanca. Blanca is from El Salvador, 
and so you know nice woman been a nice couple actually the nice family forget that um so it was it was a good time staying with them um on saturday morning blanca made us a salvadorian breakfast which is so yummy i haven't had plant i don't have plantation plantains often but when i do i forget how much i like them so i had a good time on Saturday, December 7th, Pearl Harbor Day, it was pouring rain in San Diego. So we were kind of apprehensive about how many people were going to show up to Mysterious Galaxy in San Diego. And um, the holiday party was from 3 to 5. One thing I did not understand or, or grasp was the fact that um, Jeannie, I thought it was Jeannie's book signing and she was, they were doing a holiday party at the same time. No, they're doing a holiday party where Jeannie is one of 14 authors. And so it was different for me. So what I did, well, what we did is we got there a little bit before 3. And what you, they have on the schedule is for the first 15 minutes, you socialize and you talk to your fans and you meet new people. And then after that, they have each individual author come up and to the microphone and talk about themselves and their latest novel or what they're about to publish and what they're working on. Um, they had three minutes to talk. They, um, Jeannie was the last author to talk, so she was number 14, which is not a bad thing, and she was a little disturbed by that, but I told her, it's like, think about it. You are the last person they heard. You are the last person they saw. For authors three, four, five, and 6, I couldn't tell you. I couldn't tell you what they said. I couldn't tell you what they did. They could have jumped up and down and did the hokey pokey, and I couldn't remember that. There were 14 authors. So she, you know, thought about it and was very happy. Um, what she did also is what she stated, and she stated at all three book signings that we went, that she had, was to support your local independent bookstore. Um, because, well, iTunes is great to um, upload your books on your Nook and your... Um, iPad and so far and e-readers um, and Amazon is great to upload as well as well as you know buy your book and they'll deliver it to you those are wonderful but Amazon and iTunes won't let fans and authors into their distribution places so how can you get a book that is signed by the author how can you meet the author that you really like unless it's through these independent bookstores so please if you are a reader even if you're not a reader, support your local independent bookstores. Keep them around. We need them because, and you need them because, how are you going to get to see somebody that you've, you know, an author that you like? I know there's lots of authors who are, have new books right now and that are traveling. Anne Rice just did one. Christopher Rice as well did one with, with his mother, Anne. Um, Amistin Maupin is doing one right now with his uh, latest um, Tales of the Series. Jeannie Koch just did one. Um, L.E. Mondeset Jr. just had one in September. So please, please, please support your local independent bookstores. And that's my soapbox. Let me get off of it. So, after you, they did their little spiel on the microphone, then that's when they got into actually signing their books with their fans. Um, very happy to say that Jeannie had, you know, I would say about two dozen people come to see her. Um, it was good to see some old friends, the people that I met um, when I was there in July, um, some fans of Jeannie's, you know, like um, Brian and Michelle. It was great to see them. Um, and then my friends Scott and Will came um, to see, did so, you know, spent time with them. After the event was done, there were 19 of us who went over to Soup Plantation. Now, Soup Plantation is an all-you-could-eat salad bar. It's kind of like Red Tomatoes here in Arizona. You know, it's not the best food, but it's not horrible. I mean, it's it's salad bar. You really can't mess up a salad bar. Um, so it was, but there was 19 of us. So there's no restaurant that could fit a group that big unless we sit all sit in different tables. But it was a nice time. I enjoyed the company. I scared everybody, but I'll go into that later. Uh, then um, that was Saturday, December 7th. On December Sunday, December 8th, um, we had a nice breakfast. Um, with Ollie and Blanca and the family. Um, we went to an all-you-can-eat Greek place for breakfast. I've never had Greek breakfast, and it was interesting. Of course, you don't think about it, because, but yet, yes, Greeks eat breakfast as well. You know, it's not all about, you know, 
the big sweets and the big heavy uh, meat. So we did that and then we drove up from San Diego to Redondo Beach. Now those of you who know Southern California will kind of be surprised at the fact that we did this drive in two hours. Yes, when it gave us the chance to not go the speed limit, we were not going the speed limit because we had to get make sure that we were up there by 3 in the afternoon because they had the same thing, 3 to 5 in Mysterious Galaxy in Redondo Beach. We got there, 10 minutes to spare. I had a nice time there. Um, they only had 10 authors at this one. And one of the things is that because Jeannie was last in San Diego, they put her first in Redondo Beach. Um, I got. I also got to meet Miranda, who is Jeannie, one of Jeannie's oldest friends. Um, they went to college together something something years ago. Um, not going to give the date. Um, so it was nice. It was a good time. And then um, we stayed at Jeannie's daughter's house, Veronica, who lives in downtown Los Angeles. She lives in Los Angeles because she's going to USC's law pro uh, law school. She's going to become a lawyer, and she's going to have an internship at a law office in Los Angeles. Um, coming up this summer, I believe. So we were staying with her. And that night, Sunday night, December 8th, we went, we started our food frenzy that we, that we did. Um, the first restaurant we did on Sunday night was called Industrial. Spelled Industrial, but I was corrected in, by Jeannie and Veronica, and it's Industrial. Food was wonderful. Dessert was great. Drinks were superb. The bartender came down to our table and asked us what we like, you know, what kind. You know, I told them rum and vodka and, and, you know, everyone told them what liquor they prefer. And then he came back with a drink. We didn't tell him what we wanted to drink. He just made them. And every drink that he made was just unbelievably good. So yummy. Um, like I said, the, the food was wonderful. The dessert was wonderful. On um, Monday, December 9th, we drove up to Granada Hills, which is north north San Fernando Valley area, um, to Jeannie's in-laws. And we went there for lunch. But, of course, you know, you sit and chat and visit and stuff. And I, gr wonderful people, um, had a wonderful time where I talked to, had a nice conversation with both of them and both and individually as well. Um, her father-in-law used to work in Hollywood, I believe, as a grip. Um, he's worked with, you know, he's done television shows like Bonanza. He's done um, movies like The Natural. He's done lots of stuff. He has, um, I could tell you all the stuff, but, you know, this is about Jeannie and, you know, and the books. But he's he was a nice man, and they both treated me like I've known them for years. They made me very comfortable. Um, the lunch that Jeannie's mother-in-law made was more like a dinner and I'm not complaining about it it's just it was just so good and so much food um, she the big thing is is that she made a corned beef with a glaze on it that's an old family recipe and it was unbelievably good I want that recipe because the boys don't care for corned beef and I think that if I got that recipe and made that glaze on a corned beef they would love it um, so we ate and ate and ate and ate and ate. And had, like I said, had a wonderful time. Thank you both for, for l making me feel at home and feeding me to where I was just going, where I ended up going into a food coma. Because when we got back to Veronica's place, both Jeannie and I decided to t take a two hour nap. Um, that Monday night, uh, we you know woke up and we were getting things, trying to figure out what to do for dinner. I didn't feel like going out. Um, so we ended up, um, ordering in some, some sushi, sushi and sashimi and miso soup. I've the, the, It was good. The food was good. I'm sure it would probably be a little bit better if we ate at that restaurant. And Not saying it wasn't bad. Don't get me wrong. It's just that I've never, or, I thought it was kind of weird because I've never ordered sushi to go and have it delivered. But it was still high grade, you know, tuna and, and salmon and stuff it was just it was it was good um, then on Tuesday December 9th um, we had a meeting in Cul we had a, we had a, an appointment at, in Culver City and then we stopped at um, Roscoe's for lunch now Roscoe's has been around since 1975 and um, 
they are um, they serve chicken and waffles is what they're known for I've never had chicken and waffles there's a restaurant here in Phoenix called Lolo's that everyone tells me I need to try never been there yet um, but this was just unbelievably great fried chicken I mean the yeah the skin was crispy the the chicken itself was juicy and you actually burned a little bit of your chin because when you took a bite of it the, it was so juicy that the 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 grease or whatever you want to say basically went down your your chin and it was so fresh that it was like it was hot um, waffles were wonderful you really can't mess up waffles so you could mess up pancakes but you can't really mess up waffles so it was wonderful um, had sweet tea that was interesting it was infused with either a lemon or would not with a orange zest or orange um, juice it was interesting I kind of liked it. Um, then we went, we got back to um, Veronica's place, and we walked around in a, um, a, a, a park that's near her, and so that way her her puppy Dash can you know get some exercise, and so could we walk off that chicken and waffles. And then um, for dinner on Tuesday night, we were going to go to Chinatown in Los Angeles. Well, apparently, what we found out is that you don't go to Chinatown in L.A. during the night on a weeknight. So after seeing what it was and what was going on, we decided to go back down to downtown Phoenix and where we ate, let me get the piece of paper because I want to say this correctly, um, at Bor Borgata Louis, Louis, Louis. Bor ba Borgata, Borgata, I can't remember, Borgata, hold on, let me see, make sure this is still recording. Yes, sorry about that. I heard a noise from the camera and I wanted to make sure it's still recording. But um, I'm going to call it Borgata Louis. Um, it, two thirds of it is an Italian restaurant and one third is a bakery. The food was wonderful on both sides. Um, I had lasagna because whenever I go to an Italian restaurant for the first time I always have lasagna to compare. So it was great. Um, dessert. Um, Veronica and I shared a chocolate souffle that was just so yummy. Um, I looked at the dessert, um, the other desserts that were available at the bakery and just, I wanted to take half of them home, but I knew I couldn't. Um, so that was Tuesday night. On Wednesday, uh, we went to um, downtown LA. Not the nice, not the nice new entertainment area. We went to the old part of downtown LA. So near the toy district, near the fashion district, near um, the jewelry district. It's an older older area. It's a place where you would like to only go there during the day, never at night. And where we went to Cole's, C-O-L-E apostrophe S restaurant. This place has been open since 1908. And they um, created the French dip. They are known for the place that created the French dip. So, of course, I had to have a French dip there at, during lunch. So, it was wonderful, of course. And it was it had this, it looked like an old restaurant. And it had that atmosphere. It had that feel. The food was wonderful. Um, Jeannie and um, Veronica had the same thing, which was grilled cheese and, and tomato soup. And the grilled cheese looked yummy because the cheese was oozing out when they took a bite so it was it, the food was great um, then we went to a dessert place across the street and got some desserts Jeannie and I got des some de to de a dessert to to take home because we drove back to Phoenix from Los Angeles Wednesday afternoon um, when we were in um, Indio getting gas that's when we decided to eat our desserts because both Jeannie and I were getting tired from a big lunch um, I got back Wednesday night um, and had you know literally got back didn't even unpack you know got out of my travel clothes and into my pajamas and just vegged on the couch Thursday I had three different appointments to do I didn't do the first two I did go um, Jeannie had it a book signing at the poison pen bookstore in Scottsdale Arizona on Thursday night and so I did that of course it was a nice event um, I um, had a good time there. Um, like I said, please, please, please support your local bookstores. I'm getting on my soapbox again. Support your local independent bookstores. Because also the thing that I want to put out in, your, in my friends' heads as well as the tens of fans out there 
if you have a local independent bookstore in your city, go to it. Ask them, do you um, carry Jeannie Koch, her, her Alien series, or any one of her books, any of her series of books? Ask them, do you carry her? If so, see what um, they would do about getting her there to, sign, to do a book signing. I'm talking to you, Jeff, in Palm Springs. I'm talking to you, Larry, in um, Denver. I'm talking to um, some my family in Albuquerque and my family in El Paso. I'm talking to my family in Las Vegas. You know, and even people in L.A. I mean, there was this one bookstore that we were interested in, and you know, and I have to do some research on it to see if they do carry her stuff. But please. If you want to see Jeannie Koch and buy her latest novel and get it signed by her and possibly have me come along so we could see so I could see you please check your independent bookstore see if they sell her stuff and see if they could get her there if it's a day trip that we could drive to great if it's some place that we have to uh, get an airplane you know fly we'll have to figure that out because I don't know if we can afford to go and I don't know if the bookstore would, you know, pay for it. But please, look it up. Check it out. And get us there. Alright? That's my little spiel. Um, next time you'll see, it, it, see me, it's going to be with Edward and I. And we'll go back to it. Alright? Thank you for listening. Do you want to be on, t on, on the internet? Hello, Garfield. Okay. Alright, next All right. segment. TV! Oh, TV? Well, okay. yeah. All right. Oh, and by the way, you might see a kitten and a cat. Or a cat and a kitten. Depends on how they feel. Yeah, we, we, we can't control the order. Exactly. Uh, TV. Yeah, TV. Uh, Doctor Who, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, Adventures yeah. in Space and Time. Yes. We finally saw it. We did. Uh, um, for those of you who don't know, it, it was part of the whole 50th anniversary Doctor Who thing, and this was... Basically telling the story... I thought it was going to be telling the story of the launch of Doctor Who. It did? It did, but it really was more about William Hartnell. Well, he was the, the, first, doctor. He's the first doctor, so of course it's going to be about but I mean, him. So it really wasn't talking about, oh, here's how the show got developed, and here's the rough times that happened during the first couple episodes. It did? And it, it really focused more on his... Tenure, his it, tenure it, it, as it the effect, doctor. It, they showed how um, the the female producer was getting. You know, she was the first one at BBC, so it right. showed her the hassle. Showed about the hassle of you know the what, young director. What is Hussein? You know, um, it showed the fact that they had went to, on to direct uh, Copacabana. Who they had uh, won an Emmy award for that. It also showed the fact that that's you know they went had to do the first pi the pilot twice. Yes. Which I feel like twice because yeah. it was, and as well as all the hassle about you know the set designer because it's just a kids show. Yeah. So it showed the hassle. It did show all that, stuff. but I mean, and how they almost got canceled after the first, well, well, after the second episode, until she introduced the Daleks. Actually, though, it would be the first episode. No, I, th no, I thought it was after. So the second there. episode introduces the Daleks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's when. Yeah. But, see, they were still teetering at that moment. See, there's a whole big thing that happened at that moment. And that's the reason why the fifth or sixth episode of the series is this weird episode that takes place just on the TARDIS. And it, it's kind of a, a weird, oh, wow, they're just trying to make up a story on the fly here. story Because that's what they really were doing. They, even though the Daleks had been a success... They had not received word from the BBC yet for a while that they were going to be renewed. And so they didn't get the money to commission additional scripts. So even though we saw, oh, it's a success, that really wasn't the end of the story of, it, of the start of Doctor Who. But it was like, oh, look, Dalek Mania, and then it... But it, it, it really just seemed to be more of a focus on William Hartnell, which yeah, I, I don't mind. I disagree. I don't mind that at all. I disagree. I thought it was, you know, about the how the hassles and the trials and tribulations. But I do like how they very subtly, but definitely included, um, Wada Hussein's 
um, homosexuality, which apparently was so subtle that you and Archie didn't even notice it. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I didn't know he was gay, so I wouldn't be looking for things like that. Yeah. Well, I think a lot of people wouldn't know he was gay, but it's like, oh yeah, checking out some guy over there, okay. Uh, and the guy who played Wadis Hussein was in Outsourced. Uh-huh. Yay! He was... A good television show that got cancelled. It was! I really missed that show. And yet, The Office went on forever. Mm. Uh, anyway, um, I really liked it. It was it was actually somewhat of almost a, a tearjerker. It I got I got misty eyed at the end when um um the first doctor and doctor twelve or thirteen we don't know what number he is anymore right um showed Matt Smith yeah when they were they they were on the TARDIS the first doctor was kind of saying goodbye and then and Matt Smith shows up or the twelfth or thirteenth doctor shows up and basically looked at him and had this look of his on his face saying thank you kind of a thing you know that's what I, I got out of his look right I, I had kind of a mixed feeling regarding that whole thing because you had this beautiful period piece and I'm not even a fan of period pieces but it was a beautiful period piece and then suddenly what the hell Matt Smith is there it, it was kind of a weird jarring moment <laughs> not for that me. became touching because I knew what they were it doing. was it was bookends but at the same time, if they were going to go that way, I think it would have been better if they had included shots of each one of the other doctors at the console. Then they could easily have gotten that. No, and then because, they could have shown a no. full circle before they got to Matt. No, because because what are they going to do when Matt retires? Then it's not the latest doctor. It's yeah, not a they're full not going to do. They're not going to do the movie. <clears throat> Apparently, they actually filmed it in such a way. They've stated that they can actually lift out and put in any doctor in the future. Well, then, then there you go. If they want to do it, then they could put in the, the another doctor in there. But that just seems goofy. Yeah, it does. It it seems like it, I I would have gotten a better full circle if you had shown a nod to all of the. No, and it, there's a, they a could even th really do that correctly in in the fiftieth anniversary doctor the doctors episode. Yeah. They they while it was neat to see all the doctors. They didn't do it correctly. Well, they, they were, were all at the console. They were bubbles. They were bubbles, but they were at their consoles. They were doing stuff. One even said, yeah, or something. Yeah, but it yeah. did Yeah. <laughs> yeah. BB, I'm sorry, I love BBC, but they're not exactly known for their special effects. Yeah. I, I will so say something this. doing something like that would just probably be just a little bit out of their... They need James Cameron. I, I will say this, that... I would have, if they had done what I think, what for me, if you're going to bounce out of the period, then for me it would have been better doing just that cycle of the future Doctors. Use actual clips of the real Doctors. Um, because the guy that they had playing the Doctor after Hartnell, the guy who was playing um, Patrick Troughton, Wow, he did not look like Patrick Troughton. He actually kind of looked like a drag queen, or a drag king. No, he looked like um, he looked like um. Oh God, what is his name? Dave Edna? No, 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 no. <laughs> he looked like Mo. He looked a little bit like Mo. Which okay, the second Doctor does look a little bit like Mo, but this guy just looks so much like a woman trying hard to be the Doctor. It was weird. I, I didn't, I didn't groove on that. Yeah. But I am looking forward to it being out on DVD because you know they're going to have like some really cool special on there. Hopefully, too. they'll they'll unearth some yeah. really cool stuff. Too bad we can't buy it. Well, yeah, hideously poor at this moment. But hopefully that'll change of sorts. I'm not holding my breath. Yeah, I'm not either. So, have we watched any other TV? Uh, not really. I mean, I'm all caught up in Dracula, and I got caught up on caught up on Rain. No, don't get attached to that. It's mostly the, the they're predicting that Dracula is being canceled. Um, they're also predicting that the neighbors are being canceled. Yeah. Yeah, it's sad. And they're predicting that the show I like, Almost Human, is being canceled. Yeah. Um, we haven't watched the Sing Off yet. No. Yeah. Um, tonight was the finale for The Voice, so we'll talk about it next week. 
I have to sneeze. Okay, no matter. So we haven't really... You, you say we're caught up on Project Runway, but I don't think we are. I think there's one more on there. Because we only saw one Project Runway and we're two behind. Because you got... We, we watched two Project Runways. No, only one. We only watched one? Yeah. We watched the Bart Simpson episode. What was the one right before that? Because there's still a Project Runway on the, th on the DVR. Oh. We watched the Project Runway that it was when I was gone. Oh, I thought we were caught up. No. Oh. But that blue dress that won was really cool. I thought it was purple. It is purple and blue. It was like... It was purple. Yes. It was like two dresses in one. That moved really well. Yes. Yeah. And the loser deserved to lose. Finally. Finally. His fourth time at the, in the bottom two and he finally got kicked off. Although the other guy that was in the bottom... Uh, the, the loser who got kicked off might have gotten a free ride from me just because I really hated the attitude of the guy who... The other guy that was in the bottom. Hated his attitude about it. He put up nothing and like deliberately put out nothing. Yeah. And it's like, ah, oh, whatever. It's just for a 40-year-old cartoon character, which, or a 40-year-old lady, which... 40-year-old middle-aged Housewife. Lady. Housewife. Yeah, which, okay, so you're dismissive of the challenge, you're dismissive of the intended person, and then you just didn't even really try. You put together seven looks and you put the worst one out there. The one that required the least effort out there. I, I had issues with his attitude. Yeah. But, yeah, I guess we're not caught up. I guess there's no, one, we're not. More. There's yeah. one more. Yeah. yeah. But, um, so I guess that's TV. Yeah, that's basically it. I mean, we're not really, you're between my schedule and <coughs> our, your schedule, we're not catching up. Yeah, it's really hard to catch up. And then, um, Archie went shopping, you know, on Saturday, and so we, you know, we missed out on that, and then on Sunday we went to the cemetery, so we missed out on that. Yeah. So, but someday we'll catch up. Well, the good thing is, is the fact that all our shows are going on winter break, so we could get caught up. I mean, if you look at our, what's scheduled to come on, there's, it's, it's gone down. I mean, we, we don't have two things taping tonight. We only have one huh? thing. Oh, and yeah, don't get attached to um, Once Upon a Time Wonderland. Wonderland? I, I told you. I'm they're, not attached to that at in, all. They're anticipating that one being canceled also. Yeah, well, until I hear the word out, and then I'll, I'll figure that, and then I'll just do that. Yeah. You know. But I think S.H.I.E.L.D. will be get renewed. The one, you mean the, the, the show that we only saw one episode on? Yeah. Yeah, they're thinking that S.H.I.E.L.D. will get renewed, even though... It has the same problems as some of the things I think will get canceled, but it just has such a big back behind it. Well, it's Disney. Yeah, that they're like going, no, they'll keep it. Or that show will be around probably for three seasons. Even if it's not working this season, they'll revamp it and try to make it work next season. Well, it's Disney and it's on ABC. And now here's the section where you get to find out how I turn a simple podcast moment into an adventure. <laughs> okay, now we are coming up on Samurai Comics. Yay, my comic book place. This is run by Mike. And, okay, well, okay, this isn't necessarily run by Mike right here because this is just a parking spot. But I'm, I'm pulling in. Yay. And Mike has been my comic book dude for so long. So long! Oh, I really should roll up my windows. I'm not, I don't intend on doing this whole thing while driving. I'll just, you know, just to let you know. But, right now, and actually, by the time you see this section, you should know that. Aha! See? See how it works? But, I'm doing this part because I'm in a hurry. When am I not? And do I have my keys? Please let me have my keys. OK, 
Okay, <laughs> now I'm walking back over to the comic book store because I just had to go to AAA and they were so nice there. <laughs> they helped me get into my car because I'm an idiot and I locked my keys in the car. Face of an idiot and a jaywalker. Don't do that, Mickey. Don't lock your keys in your car or jaywalk. Yay! It got done? It got done. Yay. This is the nice lady who helped who... I'm horrible with names. Why Yvette. can't... Yvette! <laughs> we love Yvette. That's right. And, and Shannon. I only know her name because... I I've threatened... Remember? No, because I tried to help Ray stalk you. Oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> and... But they had, they had tools at AAA and they, they let me borrow them. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. And they, once they told me, it's a little pump, and I went, oh my god, I just pump up the window, and then it'll open it up enough that I can use their little hooky thing, and chunk. They were even amazed at how quick that worked. That's awesome. But we don't tell Joseph that I locked my keys in my car. No, we won't. We because won't he already thinks I'm an idiot. <laughs> well, I'm recording for a podcast. Okay, oh. cool. Yay. So hi. Hi. But, but he'll skip over this part, I'm sure. I'm sure, because he loves to, he automatically will always skip over anything that makes me look like an idiot. Oh, He's conscientious nice. that way. Well, yeah. I know, isn't that sweet? <laughs> isn't that sweet? But, so, I actually was coming in, so the next issue of Archie Afterlife hasn't come out yet? Number issue two? Two. No. two is out? Yeah, two came out. Oh, I never saw two. Three is not out. Uh, I think all we have right now is Second Prince of Number One. That's what I saw. Yeah. Oh. So, you want us to call around and see if uh, we can get you one? If you could, please. That would okay. be great. <laughs> but, I don't think I have a hanger. Do you, do you want your hanger back? No, it's okay. You can keep it as a memento. Yeah. I can keep it as a lovely souvenir of, of our time together. Or there's a trash can right there. Or I could do that. That's right. But, yeah, hi. But see, comic books, as far as the eye can see. Well, and stuff that's not comic books, too. Like this employee. That's Shannon again. So are you still doing your little drawings? Mm -hmm. no? She made the stockings. <gasps> she made the stockings. Those are adorable. I don't know how to do zoom on this thing. I don't either. And plus... It's a video podcast and an audio podcast, so people who are listening to it wouldn't. They, they, so, in the world of radio or podcast imagination, imagine stockings of all different hues hung carefully behind the cash register. Ah, the magic of the imagination. It's like old time radio. Only better because it's now. Did you know that Milestone Comics right. is having its 20th anniversary? No. Yeah, or Milestone Media. We are all out. Man, that's that's filled with sarcasticness. Oh, that's okay. But well, then I guess I'll go pay my rent. Because that's what I came in. I, well, I didn't come in here to pay my rent. I came in here to get that. <laughs> yeah, but, well, I shall retry someday without locking my keys in and making all sorts of drama. And, re and, yeah, and remember, the keys are our secret. <laughs> Don't tell anybody, because that would be horribly embarrassing. I have no idea why I never can remember Yvette's name. She's so nice, and I, I truly adore her, and I space her name all the time. The only people I know the names of are people who, like, have worked there apparently for 10 years that I dealt with much. Because I think there's a skinny guy that still works there that I don't know what his name is. I have no idea. I, I just know he's that skinny guy. That's all I know. But, um, so, yeah, I'm in my car, and I got my keys, and life is good, and yay, and the ladies at, at Samurai Comics were nice to, to
to keep me, well, to let us keep this little secret so Joseph never knows that I locked the keys in the car. And so, um, and I do want to take this moment to segue into something I mentioned there, but about Milestone Media's 10th anniversary, or not 10th, 20th anniversary. Milestone is one of those comic companies that I always rave about because they put out, for four years basically, they put out the best comic books in the industry, bar none. And that's pretty much it. I mean, yeah, okay. There were a couple other companies, or a couple of comic books from the main ones that were good, but really, no, it was Milestone. Milestone was was your symbol for, or your point of quality. And I, I'm i so glad to see, they're still kind of around. I don't know what they're doing anymore. Um, DC kind of has all their characters now and they're doing nothing with them because I guess that's what DC decided to do. It would have been better just to keep them in a separate universe and let them, you know, kind of let them be separate. But now they incorporated them in and then pretty much nothing's happened. But if you get a chance, most Milestone comics are actually fairly inexpensive. The company never re really took off. In spite of the successful comic books, um, the, the successful cartoon, Static Shock, and in spite of being eventually incorporated into DC Comics and stuff like that, and characters appearing in Young Justice, doesn't matter, the comic book company still never really took off to the point where really any other stuff is super expensive. You could probably get it all for a cover price. And I highly recommend it. Um, they did Icon, Hardware, Cobalt, Blood Syndicate, Static. They had kind of a almost a, a Vertigo-esque title called Zombie. And a couple others, uh, Heroes, um, there was another one that was kind of a, an underground-y type organization. I can't remember what that was called. But very good comics put out by very talented individuals with a goal. Uh, you know, it always people always thought of them as, oh, they're that black comic book company, or they just do minorities. No, they did all sorts of characters, and the stories worked. Not because, oh, hey, there, there's other people who put out black comic books put, by black authors and artists that were nowhere near the quality and consistency of Milestone. Milestone was just good comic books. Not, not oh, it's good for minority comic books. It was, they also had gay characters. They had strong female characters. They, you know, they had... A, a white character that had his own comic book for a long time and white characters involved in the other comics so it was not just about minorities it was diversity shall we say but well done diversity so now I go pay my rent and I will catch you in a moment or seven now I mentioned Milestone's 20th anniversary that's partially because it was brought to my attention by a podcast that's that's new for me, and it's it's just a video podcast to the best of my knowledge. It's I was not able to find it on iTunes, and most audio podcasts do try to make it onto iTunes because it's free, and you get a great big audience. But it is called Hard Knock Life, and that's knock N O C because that stands for Nerds of Color. And this was episode 11, the latest episode. They've been doing this for just a brief amount of time. And, but they, it looks like the episodes are about an hour long each. They look like they know what they're doing. They got actual interviews and stuff. So they're, they're a little bit more hardcore, like real than, than we are so far in a way, right Right now you get me and Joseph and woo, although we're getting hardcore. We're getting hardcore soon. Ugh. But they are, the, it's a really nice little podcast and they did the latest episode, like I said, episode 11, does a really nice job of talking about the 20th anniversary of Milestone Media. 
they get interviews with a lot of people. Unfortunately, you know, of course not Dwayne McDuffie because he's one of my favorites and he's unfortunately deceased. Uh, I actually even changed my icon on, or my little, whatever you want to call it, on Facebook when he died. Um, but um, give them a chance. Give them, give them a check out. They will, they will hopefully pleasantly amuse you and surprise you. Now, there's also another podcast that has not updated in over a year, but we discovered her, and I thought she was charming and fun, so you know what? Give her a chance. Again, she's only on YouTube, and... I'm going to have to figure out what her name was again, because it's, it was Tia Towns, the writer, and that's spelled out T-E-A-T-O-W-N-E-S-T-H-E-W-R-I-T-E-R, and she does, she was doing a weekly podcast um, a YouTube podcast of what she's read this week. She did a review of Jenny Koch's fifth book in the Alien series, which I cannot remember the order of these books, so forgive me. But that's kind of how we found her. But I thought she was actually really charming. She was, she was quite entertaining, very charming. And you know, give her a chance, see what she's doing, and if you like it, maybe leave a message for her, and maybe we can get her back. Maybe maybe that's what she needs, just a little bit of encouragement that there are people out there who really like her stuff. I plan on sending her a quick little houses. So, I, I just haven't gotten there yet. Now, of course, we're getting back into the idea of the shout-outs that I did last week, except for I didn't do them last week because, well, the part that I did most of my shout-outs with, the, the part of the recording, it somehow just got all fudged up while when I was putting it together, and therefore it wasn't there. It was not there at all. So here I am tagging people and saying I'm giving shout outs and people are like checking out the podcast going, hey, we got a shout out and they never heard anything about them because that part was no longer in the podcast. So I'm going to try, <coughs> pardon me, and recapture as much of that as possible. Um, first off, there is, of course, Patrick of Scream Queens. If you've listened to us for any length of time, you know that I am a fan of Patrick and Scream Queens. It is a horror podcast, but you don't have to like horror movies to enjoy Patrick Scream Queens. Patrick is incredibly enjoyable, okay? I have found many a fun movie based on his recommendations. And around Halloween time, he'll also talk about haunted houses, and you get updates on some New York theater or New York life stuff, because he talks about what's going on with his life, and he is an actor, an actor. He also um, sings or performs with the, well, I guess he sings, with the, um, I think it's the Metropolitan Men's New York Chorale or something like that, I don't know. It's some sort of, some sort of course. So, he, he is very out and about, and even when he's not talking about horror movie stuff, he's talking about really fun stuff anyway. And when he is talking about horror stuff, he's fun. He's just a fun, fun dude. So, definitely give him a listen. Also, every once in a while, he will, like, hook you up with a little bit of, like, a like an old radio theater thing or an, like he'll have a friend who published something and he'll do or he'll do a reading of what what was there so there's a little bit of variety going on not just horror movies that is um, scream queens with a Z 
you can find him on the interwebs, but you can also find him on iTunes. Give him a good five-star rating when you get a chance and listen to him. You're going to want to give him a five-star rating. You're going to want to listen to him more. That's how it works. There is also Scott and Cindy of the Seder Sphere. Listen to them all the time. He's a little bit more all over the place. You know, talks about movie, theaters, TV, hockey, the stories of the Impaler, things like that. Also, every week they have their mystery musical, 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 where they will play um, a song from a musical, and you get to call up and guess what the musical is. Fun, fun show. He is very, pretty much strictly an hour. Bam. Again, iTunes. There is a, he does have a website on Blogspot but you can find them on iTunes and again you'll want to listen to them and give them a five star review because I said so! Ah. Another podcast that I've been enjoying is of course Mission Log a Roddenberry podcast they're basically talking about every episode of Star Trek in order which means that it's going to get really clever once they get to where the movies and um, where the movies, Next Generation, and D Space Nine overlap. I don't, I don't think they've figured out exactly how they're going to handle that yet. Right now, they are finishing up season three. I've been finishing up season three. I just watched. What did I just watch? Oh, and Children Will Lead Them, which uh, and. The Paradise Effect, that many of you may remember that as the episode where Kirk becomes a Native American Indian. And I remember that as being one of the reasons why Season 3 got the show cancelled. Along with the Space Hippies and the and they stole Spock's brain. But, you know what? Paradise Syndrome Paradise Syndrome, that's the name of the one where Kirk becomes an Indian, actually is a good episode. I think it's a good episode if you wisely ignore the fact that they made them Native American Indian based culture on a foreign planet that they couldn't even explain themselves. Just if you had just some sort of random alien simple culture and you toned in or toned down Kirk's acting uh, Shatner is doing a fantastic Shatner here, which is sad because Shatner can be a good actor. He just needs a strong director who has a vision that he can explain to Shatner, and then Shatner will do a great job. Um, Roger Corman did a fantastic movie with William Shatner called The Intruder. Black and white, fantastic, fantastic movie. Shatner does a great job in it. If you get a chance, go watch that and you will see. There's good Shatner out there. There's good Shatner in the Star Trek episodes. There's good Star Tr Shatner in the Star Trek movies. Okay. Undiscovered Country, I think, is a fantastic Shatner performance. But then there's off-the-top ones, like Paradise Syndrome, which... Oy, oy. But if you get rid of the stupid decision to make them American Indian and you tone down Shatner's performance, you actually have a very interesting episode that, you know, it takes place on multiple fronts and it all ties together, it's intelligently done, other than the stupid decision. But I haven't listened to what they say about it yet. I don't know if they agree or not. Give them a listen. They also have a website. They're on the Nerdist Network. Uh, that's Chris Hardwick's thing. And you can check them out there. Or you can find them on iTunes, again, where you can give them a five-star review. And their episodes also run about an hour. Patrick of Scream Queens, ah, he runs, he's kind of more like me, runs whatever amount of time he decides he needs. I think he tries to home in on an hour. We try to home in on an hour. Eh, sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. What you gonna do? And I am now at work, so I will catch you all 
when I'm not working. I will finish these scream outs. Ah! No, they're not scream outs. They're shout outs. Yeah, shout outs. Okay. So, pretty much got all my podcast shout outs out. Oh, uh, shout out out. Uh, oh, anyway. One last one of sorts. Aisha Tyler. She does Girl on Guy, which is basically her interviewing people every week. And she's she's nerdtastic and she's hot as fuck and she's funny as hell. And I highly recommend checking it out. Um, she's had on like LeVar Burden and she's had Anthony Bourdain and it's usually guys. She she does usually only she's only had a couple of women on there, but that's kind of by design because it's girl on guy. Okay, but bringing her up gets us to a little segue point where I can mention something else that she's done. Okay, and that something else would be she's written a book. She has written a book called Self-Inflicted Wounds. That's something that she does at the end of every one of her of her podcasts where she gets the guest to mention self-inflicted wounds, some sort of embarrassing st- story where something horrible happens to the, to the person that really was all their fault. That you can't blame anyone else. Well, she wrote a book of all her own self-inflicted wounds. Um, it's really cute. Uh, I've already gotten partially through it. It's, I forget how much it is for hardback, which I recommend getting a hardback because you can get it signed. But at the same time, it's the holiday season, and if you're trying to save a little bit of money here, you can always get the, um, get the Kindle version, and the Kindle version only costs $2.99. Yeah, yeah, it's a hell of a savings. Three bucks, I, I can spend three bucks to read her book. Okay. She does talk about kind of even things like the It Gets Better program. She seems to have a little bit of the same outlook I do on the whole It Gets Better thing. But that's a whole other issue or story or however you want to look at it. And, you know, it starts with her childhood and moves on up. Very funny little stories. A lot of times there's a actually a surprising little message to each one of the self-inflicted wounds of things that she should have learned but she probably didn't because you know who who actually learns from their own mistakes or how many times you had to make those mistakes before you actually learn from them that's really the question but now now that I've segued let's see how I did that we went from podcasts into books it is the holiday season you're spending all your money on all sorts of stuff you can take a little moment to spend some money on yourself and get yourself a couple little treats because there are inexpensive treats out there okay our buddy Jeannie Koch she has a book out there called the Happy Acres Haunted Hotel for active seniors you can get that one for three ninety nine again a Kindle download very amusing story paranormal you know haunted active seniors it's got a little romance that's happening on the side very cute book also you can get a book um, Jordan Summers and Marcella Rockwell both have um, items available for just 99 cents on there. I I didn't get the list of what they are. Sorry about that. I'm fairly certain that um, some other key authors that I enjoy do up there as well. Jonas Seas, um, John Retchy, who I actually had the pleasure of interviewing him. He gave me so much time and I was going to write it down as an as an article for a magazine that has gone on an exceptionally extended hiatus. One of these days I need to figure out what I'm going to do with that interview. Yeah. Because it was a good interview. I I actually really liked it. But um, 
for free you can get Fat Vampire, the first episode of that by Johnny Truant. The first episode is actually, in my opinion, the best of all of them. After that, it starts going into its own little storyline, which, not saying it's a bad storyline, it's just not what I signed up for when I first started, and it took me a while to get into the new story. Where the first episode of Fat Vampire kind of stands alone, does a beautiful job. Then also, if you're into paranormal romance, there is Shadow Touch, apparently written by a friend of Jeannie's. Aaron Kellison, that's also free. I'm not a huge romance fan, but I will say that the description actually did look interesting, and you can't beat the price of free. Free's a great flippin' price. Um, those are some things that you can check out and see about, like, you know, getting yourself a little treat for the holidays while you're spending all your money on everyone else. Okay. Now, speaking... Oh, also, check out Emery C. Walters, another author that we're, we are familiar with. It actually happens to be the mother of the roommate that dare not speak his name. Uh, he's written a couple books. I don't know if any of them are available for download, but I'm just giving a shout out to Emery anyway. And check him out. He's uh, actually his publisher's here in town. And I've seen very good reviews. We have one book, but it got packed away, and I haven't had a chance to dig it out and read it yet. Need to get more of Emery's books. But apparently, very good books. So. Keep up the good work, Emery. Back to the idea of free. Everybody likes online gaming. This is me. This is me giving a whole list of shoutouts here. Everybody likes online gaming, but online gaming costs an arm and a leg sometimes. Unless you play Kingdom of Loathing. Kingdom of Loathing is an online game kind of almost a parody of the games, but you do play, and you get to have a little stick figure. I believe I'm a pasta mancer. Yeah, yeah but I might be a disco thief. I'm, I don't remember. It's It's been a little while, because I set up different characters, but I have one main one, because he has a, a pet balloon monkey. And you go around doing your quests, going up levels, you get familiars. Like I the pet balloon monkey and it just keeps on going up and up and up free game it's a free game and you're not gonna get your whole life sucked away into it because you can only play a hundred turns per day except for if you eat enough lunch or drink enough booze because then you can add more turns but there's still only so many more turns you can add Okay, because you can only eat so much or drink so much before you're just fat and drunk and you pass out and you're not playing the game anymore. Yeah. So, check out Kingdom of Loathing. They're also actually located here in town. They also have a podcast. Um, I, I can't remember what it's called. I want to say it's the KOL podcast or something like that. But, check them out. Very fun little game. Uh, we're coming up on Crimbo. So you're going to want to get in there so you can get your Crimbo gift. Um, and, you know, Crimbo is always a lovely time of year. So that, I believe, actually catches me up on all the shout-outs that I missed out on last week. Yeah. Yeah, and that really sucked that I missed out on all those, too. I can't believe I missed out all those. But, now, you have a nice little list of recommendations, and most of them, inexpensive. You gotta love inexpensive, if not downright free. So, that is my recommendations. Yeah. Ta-da! Shoutouts! roo doo 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 Oh, it's recording. I have no idea how far we got there. But, we only have one more thing. Oh, one more thing left? Yes! Yes! Hey, Paul! Brother-husband! Yes! Happy 
Merry Versary. Congratulations on your wedding. You got married this past Saturday. Congratulations, brother, husband. I wish you the best. Finally, oh wait, Mickey, cover your ears. Congratulations, you finally got laid, Paul. Brother, yes, husband. yes, and because he waited until he got married. So yay, thirty-year-old virgin, thirty-something-year-old, thirty-one. Yeah, and and he found a girl that would put up with his brony ass. in the sky I do believe that everything's a sky I can see that you believe in my phony lies but don't go jump into those raw conclusions on the old sunrise on the old sunrise closing song. It is called Old Sunrise by an artist that last I heard was going by the name Ari. I do not know if I'm not even sure if this song ever has been released. Uh, I have the album and I don't know whether anything has happened with this album or whether or not Ari is recording under Ari or under his given name or has chosen a different name or what. But that's what that is. I again want to thank 
everybody for paying attention and watching and listening and 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 loving us and sharing and all that. I want to thank Yvette. Hey, look at this. I'm going to learn your name, Yvette. Because I thoroughly embarrassed myself by forgetting your name, especially in front of you on film. So it's now embedded in my head. You're Yvette. I'm going to thank Yvette for being so kind while I was stranded at, at, well, I wasn't stranded at Samurai Comics. I was going to Samurai Comics, but I was stranded there because I, well, because of that thing we shall not mention because Joseph does not need to know. Shh. And also the lovely people at AAA who helped me out. Yay, thank you. Right across the street. AAA Repair Shop. Love you guys. Over on around 12th, just before 12th Street in Camelback. AAA Repair Shop's on the north side of the road. Samurai Comics is on the south side of the road. Go, go to one for car things, especially if you're a member of AAA, go to another one, go to the other one for all your comic book needs and your comic book wants and desires and other related sundry things such as magic cards and stuff. They'll hook you up. Samurai Comics has two other locations that I don't know. One's like glendale and one's like Tempe Mesa. It, they're, they're out there and this one's down the street so I don't need to know the addresses of anything. Also, giving a quick shout out to Joshua Tree Feeding Program. They do great work helping people with HIV and AIDS with having food. They also have the Joshua Tree um, Pet Food Program, which helps um, people who with HIV and AIDS basically provide food for their pets so they don't have to decide whether or not they're going to eat or whether they're going to feed their pets. The website is www.jtfp.org. Go check it out. They're, in a, they're a volunteer organization, so any assistance that you're willing to give, they'll be more than happy to take. Check out World of Wonder channel on YouTube. You'll get all your gay needs taken care of there, or at least all your RuPaulish needs and drag queen needs. So, woo! I forgot about them in the shout outs, in other words. And other than that, hope to catch you all next week. Tell a friend, telephone, television, televangelist. No, just just do things. Leave comments, leave reviews, tell everybody you know, show us some love. It's the holiday season, share some love. And catch you next week. Bye. Oh, you can't see me.